Today we are diving deep into the fascinating world of factorials, including the curious case of factorials of negative numbers. To start, we all know what a factorial is. The factorial of a positive integer n is the product of all natural numbers up to n. For instance, the factorial of 5 is the product of 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, 5, which equals 120. Now let's consider the factorial of 0. Most of you know that the factorial of 0 is 1. But why is that? If we substitute 0 into the traditional formula for factorials, it seems we would get 0. Why, then, is it defined as 1? The answer lies in understanding the sequence of factorials. Factorials are fundamentally a sequence, where each term is the product of the first and natural numbers. For example, the first term is the product of one natural number, the second term is the product of two natural numbers, and so on. Each term in the sequence can be expressed as the current number multiplied by the previous term. This gives us a general formula. The nth term equals n times the previous term. This sequence is analogous to triangular numbers, which instead of products, involve sums. For triangular numbers, the next term is found by adding n to the previous term. Both these sequences traditionally use natural numbers as their input. Now, returning to our question, what is the factorial of zero, or equivalently, the product of zero natural numbers? To answer this, consider the sum of zero natural numbers, or the zeroth triangular number. The method for finding both is the same. Instead of directly substituting zero, we substitute one in the general formula. For triangular numbers, if we put in or as one, the formula for the previous term gives us the zeroth triangular number as zero. Similarly, for factorials, substituting n as one gives us the factorial of zero as zero one. Note that we never directly use zero as an input here. Factorials and triangular numbers are defined over the set of natural numbers. To extend their domain to real or even complex numbers, mathematicians use the gamma function. The gamma function generalizes factorials, and its graph shows that factorials are undefined at negative integers and also on complex numbers at those points. However, I have a solution to define factorials even for negative integers by extending the domain to singularity numbers. As many of you know, the gamma function satisfies the relationship. Gamma of n plus 1 equals n times the gamma of n. From this, gamma of 0 would equal 1 divided by 0, which corresponds to the singularity unit k. Similarly, the relationship between gamma and factorials tells us that the gamma of n equals n minus 1 factorial. Substituting 0 into this relationship shows that negative 1 factorial equals the singularity unit k. Using the same logic, the factorial of negative 2 becomes negative k, and so on. This way, all factorials acquire unique values in the singularity number system. You might be wondering about the implications of defining 1 divided by 0, or k. While this concept might seem unconventional, I believe it is essential to define these numbers. Singularity numbers exhibit unique properties that cannot be ignored. These numbers cannot be represented on traditional 2D or 3D planes, like complex numbers. While complex numbers are graphed in 3D, singularity numbers require a fourth dimension. Their behavior is fundamentally different, and they exist in a parallel mathematical dimension. As such, negative one factorial cannot be graphed alongside other numbers because it operates in this parallel dimensional framework. Thank you for watching. I encourage you to comment your thoughts about singularity numbers below. In future videos, I will discuss parallel mathematics and how it expands our understanding of numbers. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more intriguing mathematical concepts.